Uh, greetings, family. This is Bomani Tamba. Welcome to Africa for Africans Tours uh, Conference Call. Our operation is about tours and investment. February 16th, uh, we're here to talk about uh, Senegal, the Gambia, and the South Africa tours for 2020. And I'll be your tour leader taking you on a journey. So all these tours are set. I'll be joining with you, but I'm also here organizing the tour with you on a daily basis. Uh, we have four wonderful journeys coming up. Senegal and Gambia in April, Ghana in May, South Africa in November, and Ghana again in December. So all the frame of reference of everything I'll be talking about, you have full access to it on our website at africafortheafricans.org. And I'll go to also the social connections of where all of the pitches, videos, and uh, other things are. So right now we are getting ready for our epic, wonderful uh, venture to Senegal and the Gambia. And so we are set uh, with that journey to leave uh, April 3rd and return April 13th. So literally about eight, eight and a half day uh, journey on the continent in Africa. So that's five days in Senegal and three, three and a half days in the Gambia. So right now one of the main things uh, for us to deal with visas. So I want to make sure that um, everyone that's traveling with us to the Gambia understand that you have to have a Gambia visa. So what we have done is I sent all, we have emailed everyone that has interest or everyone that's coming with us. That information is something we try to send out right away. The biggest uh, update is that on January 1st, uh, the Gambia have a new, a new price for their visas. It's $200 up from the $100. And what they're doing now is um, just doing multiple entry, good to up to five years. And so the visa process that we have for the uh, Gambia, what I've done in the new email is send an email with a uh, sample application. And it's and a sample application is basically us just filling out the, the details with this. We don't put all of our real information in there. It's just we just fill it out. And that way sometimes if you're looking at the visa application, you may just wonder, it's, it's everything is uh, set for self-explanatory except for you know, when it comes to the address and the Gambia and so on. Uh, so that's where it's really helpful. But all you're really doing is putting your personal information and then answering a few questions. All right, so once you uh, look past the application, and the you know, other thing you'll say is how to apply for a Gambia visa. So you'll see all the fees and everything, and it's a simple thing you do, and you're submitting the one application and you're signing it. Uh, date and sign, and you're adding a passport style photo to it. And what they want you to do is uh, put your passport number, and then they want you to put your name on the back of the picture. So all these little details are followed through. And uh, just put the for the money order. Just, that's what I recommended. It's just the simplest thing to do because you're going to the post office. Just get your money order and put it in the package and write it payable to the embassy of uh, the Gambia. And the address is right there in the application. And what you want to do is put a prepaid return envelope in the package also. And while you're doing that, the best thing I recommend is make sure you have a copy of all your documents, copy of your outgoing uh, package, and also a copy of your return package. Just, even if you just want to take a photo of it, um, that way you have your outgoing and your return uh, tracking. And that's the main thing that we just recommend everyone do. Get um, purchase packages. That is going that you can you know you can track or make sure you have you know, trackable uh, packages, and not saying that the tracking is gonna save you from anything, but it is a form of documentation and a form of how you can keep up with you know your your, your package with your passport. But the main thing is a passport. Your passport has to be put in the package, and uh, that's it for the um, the visa. And anybody who's traveling with us, if you have any questions and you're not clear about certain things, just like anything else, just reach out to us. All right, and let me just uh, switch to an uh, overview of information for our uh, Senegal and Gambia tour. So what I'm doing right now is going to our website, and for those who are doing screen sharing, you'll just see me on the website, africafortafricans.org. I'm going to go down to solicit tours on the beginning of the main menu. Uh, just look for the one that's relevant. Uh, you will see a Senegal and Gambia Roots Tour April 2021, and the reason for that is to... Put the dates out ahead of time and give more people a chance to 
process it and think about the dates and think about joining us. Because the last journey that we had, this journey that we had, I was only able to get it out about a good eight months, which uh, is a decent time. But, you know, you want to get these things ahead of time so people can, you know, get the time off. Because a few people told me that they weren't able to get the time off or plan for it because, you know, it's within a year. And, you know, you know I definitely, you know, realize that. But when the opportunity came up to do this journey, it was just, we had to jump on it. Uh, the dates were clear and, and, and so on. Senegal and the Gambia, which tour April 2020. So once you click on the link on the website, um, you know, you'll see the tour overview, the itinerary, general terms, visa, departure reminder, and improving immune system. Those are the uh, main articles and 100% of the information that we have for the journey. So it's something that we try to go over over a period of time, but it's also, also something that uh, we, are, we want everyone to take their time and read, read and read and be clear on especially the itinerary. The itinerary uh, defines everything that we're doing uh, as a flight schedule and the day-to-day -day, uh, sequence um, on the tour. That way you can plan, you can, and, you know, you can be clear. A tour will be set and the main thing, um, all of the tours that we have that I'll be talking about, same things are included. Once you pay for the tour package, um, when, you, when you're on the ground, transportation, two people uh, to a room unless you pay for a single room, Continental or daily breakfast and daily uh, dinner, and the uh, only meal that's not uh, included is um, lunch. And that's you know you can we'll work it to where we get somewhere where you can just uh, get your lunch and get um, you know, be able to just pick what you want. And if you want more traditional food, that's a great opportunity then. But as far as uh, dinner, um, smaller groups uh, or just you know we tend to those who want to eat at the, the hotel or the resort, they can eat there, and then those who want to go out with us can go out with us on the smaller groups, which is uh, South Africa, uh, Senegal, and Gambia. Um, on our Ghana journeys, um, this all, all depends. But the main thing, all of the groups that we do, this all, dep all depends. But um, with the newer journeys, like this one, it's trying to create some incredible um, flexible opportunity to where when we go out to, when we have dinner, um, those who want to, organize and come with us. We could just pick different locations and just experience uh, dining. Uh, and the same thing that we did in South Africa was a great experience. Uh, we don't have a quote-unquote business uh, investment uh, conference, but what we do is have um, networking. So uh, the goal was to put something together uh, based on numbers that we're anticipating and organize a certain people. But we'll do something more private and connect people to those who from the desk that's been there to Senegal and doing business there so got something nice and you know we'll build from it as this is the first time we have actually have a Senegal and the Gambia tour to go it's been crazy but all the ones I've had before in the past I've canceled because of lack of interest but then again you know you, you know in this kind of business you have to build your energy up for people to know about you so this is the perfect timing I'd love to do some um, daily exercise and things like that. Um, so whenever we have people who are, f are flexible, you can lead exercise and you know, let us know you're going to be available in the morning. We'll join. Other than that, it's said to encourage people to get up early in the morning, exercise, meditate, even if no one is out there to lead you. Uh, and that's your time to just get your mind ready for a wonderful journey for the day. All right, so what's not included is uh, lunch, group tips of $50. Um, and if we go to any site and something came up yesterday where they come up with a camera slash camcorder fee, uh, which I never can ever be prepared for because things have changed throughout the different sites and countries, uh, that's up to the individual. So we have what's included and what's not included just for clarity. That way, you know, you don't go on one of these journeys and you're surprised because people have told me they went on certain journeys and then next thing you know, someone is telling them they have to pay for entrance fee and certain things. You know, now, I really just believe we have to just be organized and clear because then we confuse our people. So uh, I personally just go by what I have typed up myself and what we have clear based on when we put things together. And it's the same flow and you know, try not to change a bunch of things. But, you know, all these things have to be clear. And we try to set uh, you know, the bar for, you know, for those who are coming to because I realized when we first started doing tours, it was just, there wasn't a whole bunch of people doing tours in Africa, but now it's like a floodgate of tours. So... The least we can do is set certain examples for those who are coming and, and set certain standards that we know, you know, since um, you know, more of the popular force is just doing organized tours, uh, which I've learned from, you know, 
uh, some of you know some of the best seeing how they have done educational tours and uh, you know add our own uh, flow to it. Uh, so Senegal, uh, five days, and it's a wonderful list of things. Let me just go through a list of these things and go through the three days in the Gambia. Uh, we'll do a full tour of Gori Allen and the African Holocaust Museum uh, in Senegal, and that's off the coast of uh, Dakar, uh, in its own separate island called Gori Allen. Dakar full city tour of roots and culture. So the biggest thing is the African Renaissance uh, monument and also the uh, museum. Uh, a lot of networking, uh, go to different markets. Um, there's a few. Um, uh, Sheikh Anta Diop, uh, University of Dakar will, and a few other things, the Grand Mosque, uh, certain things we'll be doing more of a driving tour and going through, and the tour guide will be explaining certain things. Uh, Independence Square, uh, Pink Lake or Lake Redba, and so uh, these uh, basket markets. Uh, so the overview is there for you to see the different things we have, uh, but definitely looking to do, do also just you know, other various uh, museums and markets. Uh, beaches, tropical view of the country because you're right there where you do have beach access and beautiful view of the, the ocean uh, while you're there in both countries. And we definitely one of the things we'll definitely be able to experience is wonderful nightlife and wonderful dinner and just a lot of tropical um, you know, food and dancing and just the culture itself. Uh, so if you want detailed information, I would just say uh, just take your time and read through the itinerary. The itinerary is very detailed on all of the different things that we're going to be doing. As far as the hotel we're staying at, um, again, it's um, a wonderful four-star hotel. The link is at the bottom, um, com, and once you click on it, you'll see the energy. I've never been to that one before because we used to use the, um, the hotel Novotel, but this is a Senegalese business hotel, so it's perfect for our, our connection. So I get some feedback from everyone who wants to be uh, lodged there for four days. Now, after four days... Um, we're going to leave and head to the Gambia. Now it's, um, it's about a four or five hour drive. And you know the goal is to leave early to where we can get to the Gambia. We can just enjoy that day also. Now once we're in the Gambia, we're going to head to Ocean Bay Hotel. And that is right there on the beach. So we got some real beautiful four star hotels uh, set up um, that are black owned. Uh, so this gives us a chance to do a high level of this roots and culture, black owned journey, just like we're coined with our Ghana journey. Now Senegal and the Gambia, one of the, the popular things is the, the Wolof language in Mandinka. So you'll find people in both countries that, uh, that speak the same. So it's kind of like families that were divided. It's like you know, the British and the French came and just carve out their parts of what they wanted. And so it's kind of a mess when you look at it. But uh, we as the people have you know, been doing our best to survive, but that's one of the things you notice when you look at the map of Christian and news that you're wondering why this little part of a country is carved out and then, because you know, Senegal will be at the top of the Gambia and also at the bottom of the Gambia. And so once we're in uh, the Gambia, uh, we do the Banjo uh, city tour, uh, go to various markets, Walk the Golden Beach, and we're just right there on the beach itself. And you know, you're looking at beautiful black sand beach. Um, lots of market and lots of uh, shopping. And the highlight that we have there is our tour to James Allen and our tour to Jufari, home of Punta Kente. So uh, you're dealing with African Holocaust also there in the Gambia. And once we finish in the Gambia, we're going to head out back to Senegal. But instead of going back to Dakar, uh, we're going to go to Simone, uh, which is right there by the airport. So we just use that as a last day for shopping, relaxing and organizing ourselves, and then um, just head to the uh, airport. All right, Simon, so that is just an overview. And um, the main thing is for all of us to have, uh, all of us understand that um, the Gambia requires a visa for us to get, but Senegal does not. And uh, when we fly, we just fly directly into the new Senegal airport there in Ndias and depart the same way. Uh, so that is our flow of our journey. It's, um, it's a wonderful uh, itinerary, but it's, just, you know, it's also very simple, and you know, which is which is perfect because you know we can just use it as a nice little getaway and build from, just like our South Africa journey. 
All right, so family, what I'm going to do is open the call for questions, uh, just in general, for anyone who does have any questions about uh, Senegal and Gambia or just want to talk about certain things. And also note that uh, we have the same schedule for 2021, so if you have any inquiry about that, um, uh, that will be good also. All right, so family, I, I took everybody out of lecture mode and put everybody back in the general meet mode, so you can press star six now to unmute yourself. And just give your name, um, where you're calling from, your question. Hi, Bamani. Uh, this is Shelly giving a call from Portland, Oregon. I hope you're having a beautiful day, and I'm so glad to be on this call. Green, um, Shelly. I'm, call, hi. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not traveling again until December, or not traveling until December, but I'm trying to put together my budget and get a thorough understanding, been on your website and just paying attention as much as I can. And I'm just wondering, what do you recommend um, as daily um, money, incidental monies? How, how much are people averaging spending out of their own above the cost of the um, tour? So like for, for instance, for lunch or um, uh, street vendors or um, shopping or anything like that. Do, do you have an idea or a, or a suggested amount, a daily amount that people should kind of think about having available to themselves? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, based on what you're spending, um, I would recommend anywhere from 50 to $100, which comes out to 500 to to $1,000. Depends on how you spend it. Okay. When you're talking about... Um, uh, lunch, you know, looking at anywhere from ten U.S. dollars to twenty dollars in lunch, and some people may be less because maybe they just want something light to eat, like a, a salad or certain things. Uh, so uh, you can look at that. And as far as going out buying certain things, you know, maybe every once in a while you may buy a shirt or buy certain things, and that may come up to ten, twenty dollars. But then, you know, <laughs> I have some serious shoppers that be going at it when we travel, and they exceed budgets beyond certain things. Uh, so. Um, you just have to kind of flow with what you're looking to do and be prepared. So uh, if you need to go to the uh, ATM machine, just have cards available. We'll get you there on a daily basis. If you need to exchange your U.S. currency, bring $100 and $50 big bills. That way you can get a higher value of the local currency, whether you're in uh, Senegal, the Gambia, Ghana, uh, South Africa. It seems like it all works the same based on the bigger uh, currency. And uh, beyond that, um, you know, that's the good thing about it, the journey we have. We have everything set to where the main things are paid for, you know, uh, dinner, uh, spend entrance fees and things like that. And then if you go at nighttime, uh, whatever we put together for taxi fares or whatever we get out is usually not much. So that's what I'll just recommend, 50 to $100, $500 to $1,000 total on the trip. Okay. And then the other thing for me, um, very important to me, is tipping. So... I know that the Ghana tour, it's, it seems like the bus holds like 38, so there, it'll be a bus primarily. How is the driver tipped? How do, is that like, is there a set amount that, that goes at the end? Do we do it every day? What is the expectation for tipping? Uh, what we do is we collect group tips and it's split up um, to where, you know, the driver may get uh, anywhere from 30 to 50 U.S. dollars and maybe – you know, somewhere along that, but it's, it's split up to where those the people that's with us for a long time, the different assistant or the tour guide, they get the bulk, bulk of the tip, and then what we do is that we split it up at the hotels as best as possible, and, you know, sometimes we just give whoever's in charge for, especially for the smaller hotels where it's not a whole lot of employees, but uh, for big hotels where you can't really control certain things, you just take care of the main people that does things for you, the, especially the people who handle your bags, clean your rooms, and and take care of you at the receptionist, and just we just spread uh, the group tips. But individuals can tip, uh, especially when you know doing lunch or doing like certain dinner meals. But we do our best to try to tip with it. And uh, when we go to the sites, we put together group tips for the guides uh, at the site. And then and then ultimately, anyone who want to tip a little bit more can tip. Um, and the tips also cover us as getting water and getting certain things uh, for our group. So if I'm in Ghana, so I'm doing, again, the December trip in Ghana, uh, that's two weeks. Should I, like, maybe think of, of, like, $50 for a whole week or more or less that yeah, would be disper yeah. distributed out? Uh, as far as tips, the group tips, you're covered with group tips of $50. So if you 
want to tip anymore, I would say I can't really tell you what you'd want to do. Um, if you want to do one or two dollars to certain people, but uh, the reason why we do group tips because we don't want people to stress about tipping everybody. I mean, I understand that we're we're being very nice and trying to tip everybody and things like that. But what we do is go beyond what everybody else does. Unfortunately, um, we do okay. real good without tipping and things like that. But appreciate the questions and everything. Okay. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, greetings. Uh, can you give your name and where you're calling from? Can you hear me, Bomani? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Oh, it's Sister Cooper from Florida. How are you? Uh, excellent. Uh, uh, good uh, talk to you. What's uh, your question? Yeah, I won't be able to do the March thing, but I'm wondering if I have repatriated already by December, would I be able to join the tour? Since I will be new there and don't know anybody, I still want to do your tour. Uh, yes, absolutely. You just have to plan everything out. Uh, the main thing is just to be clear on our dates um, while we're there and our schedule while we're there, and uh, we can work it out. And then what you do is um, when you're on when you're on our site and you click on Ghana December 2020, uh, one of the, one of the articles will be tour overview. And on tour overview, it give you uh, it give you one price for tickets and one price without tickets. Uh, so you okay. just select the price without. So that will be the uh, cost. Um, <coughs> And um, and it will be, you know, when you're there, they sh when you're there, you may just look at it as like it's a lot because uh, that's what people do when they're there in Ghana. And I tell people it's American tourist price and uh, we have a lot to cover. But um, that's uh, the local price. So if you're fine with that, um, I would just say join us and um, lock in your deposit and we'll get you all set up. Uh, right now that tourist um, just turned around and we have 10 people already. Just okay. put it out recently. And I just uh, secured our, our group booking to where I've selected a nice amount of flights. And as people come on, we just add them. But uh, since you're there on the ground, uh, you'll you just be able to join in based on, you know, what we have, you know, based on what we have set up. So if you wait, uh, so if you do it ahead of time and you want a roommate, we can just offer you with our, the roommate. But if you come in there at the last minute um, and you just want to join in and there's no roommates available, you have to pay for single supplements. So... I always tell everyone, just you know that that if they do any last minute thing, they have to, you know, because it's based on two people to a room. Mhm. Mm okay. Thank you so much. Absolutely, and all the best in your ventures and your connection to get to Ghana, and we'll look forward to seeing you in December. Okay. Bye. All right. Okay. Can I get in? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, this, uh, since I, I know you, but uh, just introduce yourself, uh, name, um, calling from, in question. Yeah, I'm Juma Rafiki, calling from Los Angeles. So, um, first question was, uh, how many um, uh, staff do you have with you um, on on this trip to uh, Senegal? Uh, me and my tour guide, uh, we're gonna, it's, you know, we're gonna handle everything for everyone. Yeah, because I remember when I went to Ghana with you, you had like, about two or three guys. I'm thinking about, you know, I'm a AAA member, so I'm thinking about buying my currency before I leave. Is that you think that's okay? What AAA allows you to do is you uh, the, you tell them what country that you're going to, you bring them a certain amount of cash, and they'll send it to they'll send it to their office, and you pick it up in about two weeks. I would say go for it and let us know what the experience is like. Oh sure, yeah. Okay, because I didn't know I could do that the um, when I went to Ghana with you, but I said it could save me a whole lot of problems. I mean, it's just the just a convenience to be uh, to already have it in hand when I touch down. <clears throat> and then the other thing was that um, you know, just like in Ghana, um, in Senegal, you can use your visa. Uh, debit card and and or credit card there, right? Uh, yes, you'll be able to get local currency uh, in both countries. Uh, Senegal, um, uh, Saifa, and uh, the Gambia, Dalasi, and just, and then just always think about the banking, you know, the banking and how they do fees and things like that, which I never, I, there's no way for me to know. So the best thing I always say is just talk with your bank before you leave and let them also know you're going to be using your card and then you know, you can talk with them about any clarity of any fees. Yeah, because I was one of those people. I took about $2,000 when I went 
to Ghana, and I was one of those people that kind of like went overboard shopping for family here, and uh, I had to, there was a time I had to use it. But it was a good thing that you had Mohammed there, because he was able to do exchanges. Then I'm going to Gambia, we have something a little different, but nevertheless, I would, um, I organize a tour guide is, you know, it will take us to a certain location, and then we'll do our money exchange privately. <clears throat> Yeah, like okay. the person will come on the bus and work it out as we move. So that's how we typically usually do that. But you know, when we have somebody designated like our brother, uh, he tends to you know we just use him. But and other than that, we just make our stops to different you know forex location and you know, keep them moving. But definitely, if anyone can get currency ahead of time, that's always recommended. And then also when you go to the um, when we at the airport. I always recommend us to do that. I try not to get into that conversation where you get more out there, you get more there, but whatever more or less, it's not too much of a significance. You know, the thing of it, we need money exchange, so let's get it. And then next time we have a, another opportunity, we get it. But but if individuals want to calculate whether it's more at the airport or so on, and they want to do something somewhere else, that's absolutely fine. But I'm always mm -hmm. like, you know, get a little money you can get, then you can kind of compare it to next time, and then you just work it out. Um, did you want to touch on shots again, or the need for shots? If no, if if, if we need them or if we don't need them, I know you. Just, I don't think I think you said we didn't need them. Uh, the yellow fever shot. Well, perfect. Yeah, that's always a good question because um, it's always a big concern. Yeah, you know, what I've set up on the tours that we do is, for the most part, is I have an article on every tour link. It's called Building Your Immune System, where it just talks about herbs and how to you know get yourself organically uh, organized and healthy at the highest level. So that's what I personally recommend. Uh, and every country that uh, we go to, when I look at the requirements of if, if certain things is mandatory, they won't let you in. No country, Senegal, Ghana, the Gambia, South Africa, none of them say that if you don't have this vaccination and show it that they won't let you in the country. Right. So from that standpoint, it's not mandatory. But if individuals want to talk to their doctor and get yellow fever, want to get, I don't even know what's out there. There's just so many things that's out there, but you know, um, and I don't want to <laughs> say my personal feeling and, and record the calls that's being monitored. Um, but, <laughs> you know, I just believe that it's just too much of a hype of uh, getting shots to go anywhere. And I'm from Jamaica. I came here, I didn't get any shots. And I left here, went to Africa, went to different countries um, all over the world, no shots. And, and the main thing I just believe is just keep yourself hydrated and <clears throat> keep away from too many street food that's over gutters and places like that. I know sometimes people, I see people doing videos, yeah, the street food in this country is awesome and everything, but you know, but, you, know you have to, not try to talk down about anybody, but you want to deal with things that's going to put you in the most hygienic way where the, whoever is doing the food is washing hands, they're cooking, so for the most part, you know, restaurant standards is you know, supposed to be where the people that are working there follow those procedures, and you know, when you're on the street, it's like anything goes. You know, right. street food is good, but, you know, sometimes you question yourself, so where's the bathroom or where's you washing your hands and things like that. So yeah. when you, you know, so when you're thinking about getting sick, it comes from certain things of lack of, you know, just like people talking about these crazy viruses, all of them, you know, it's all based on just keep yourself clean and secure and, you know, they're man-made, so I don't know how certain things, but you you doing those things just give you a greater chance of being good. And, uh, you know, even when it comes to mosquitoes, um, mosquitoes like sweet smells and things like that. So you just you don't you don't want to you don't want to expose yourself to that situation. You out at night, you know your legs are exposed or your arms are exposed, and you know you just got a bunch of sweet fragrance and the mosquitoes are attacking you. I know some people like I'm sweet anyway, but you know you can just use sprays and things like that. But uh, those are the basic things you want to do to cover yourself. Um, so you and then do not drink the local water. Like don't drink water anywhere. Make right. sure you get some. Spring water, if you can find those, but you know, uh, purified water is like glorified tap water. Right. Now, what about the malaria pills? Yes, yeah, another thing too. Um, you know, I can't be bouncing around different parts of the world and just popping pills like I'm a drug addict. <laughs> right. <You know? laughs> yeah. But yeah. I mean, if people want to do that, they do that. But I've literally put myself out there and travel to these places, and you you see me, people like. He, he's out, then he get back up. You know, if I was, you know, if he's, and you know, and I'm fine. I'm not, I'm not no superhuman, but it's like I, every time I go somewhere, I think in a positive mindset that I'm gonna be healthy. I'm gonna make sure I drink my water, make sure you know, I try to eat certain things, and 
you know, exercise myself. Like when I'm in uh, Ghana, a lot of uh, coconut water, or just yeah. anywhere in the world, as you can get anywhere you travel, you can get coconut water. You can get things that are just naturally there in the country that just boost your immune system and just give you those things. So when we went to Ghana, um, do you, uh, did you know I use the exchange apps for currency that we I have put on my iPhone? You know, and I, f I found that you can do the same thing in Senegal, too. You know, if it helps to clarify the currency situation out there. Because I know it's, um, it is different out there. Yeah, and that's why people are saying that the Echo will be perfect in West Africa. Like, we you know, we go to Ghana, Togo, Benin, uh, Senegal, again, we have five countries alone. One currency would definitely, you know, be good. And then if we have... You know, if we have ECOWAS citizenship, we don't have to do a bunch of visas in all these countries. Uh, True. Yeah, all of those uh, will be good. But as far as the, uh, the app itself, um, yeah, just use the app or anything <coughs> online uh, to keep up with the currency. But for the most part, they don't change that much. Okay, well, I'm good. I said all I have to do is pack. Yeah, all you have to do is pack. And uh, what I'm working on right now for uh, Senegal... I'm going to add everyone to the, the spreadsheet and send over the Delta and add our routes that um, we send a, a tenor with and they'll just lock us in and I'll get emails out to you to log in, check it out. And then we'll close out on the balance at the beginning of the month and get that out of the way and then um, I'll have everybody room in, situation all set up ahead of time and we'll be ready to go. As soon as we get the email from Delta, is we can choose um, to upgrade our seats if we if we so choose so to do so. Right? Uh, yes, once you get the Delta receipt, the Delta receipt is basically saying that your, your ticket was paid for in full by the person who organized your, your your group, myself, and then you can go in and upgrade because uh, it's giving you yeah. a ticket receipt saying that you know and so on. But until then, when I first send the information to you, it's basically for you to log into Delta.com and also. Uh, log into um, Air France and the other parties uh, we're flying with. Uh, even though it's all a part of Delta Sky Team and Delta Group Booking, you log in there and check it out. You can add your seats at that point, uh, but in your case, it won't let you upgrade. It'll say it'll, it'll give you a message. The message is basically saying that the ticket is not paid for yet. It's not going to say it in that word. It's going to say something else, but it basically equals that the ticket is not paid for to where. You can't do upgrades. Uh, you can add seat, basic seats and you can add meals and certain things like that. But uh, once everyone confirmed that everything looks good, then I work on the next procedure to close out on it. So that way there's no mistakes. Like if somebody, if somehow I gave somebody the wrong route, it's that person time to say, oh, Bomani, I'm coming from Atlanta, not New York. Or my name is spelled this way and not that way. And all of that makes it easier to fix before we get them all the money. You know, once you get... <laughs> you give them all the money, then they have all their fees and all the stuff to change and do things. And so that's for everybody that's coming with us uh, this year and next year. But uh, Juma, appreciate your questions. Uh, and um, let me see if anybody else has any questions for Senegal and the Gambia, and then we'll move to uh, the next tour that we have. Okay. Thank you. All right, absolutely. Perfect. All right, family, the line is open. Uh, press star six to unmute yourself. And uh, if there's any questions you have about Senegal and the Gambia, and if you have another question about something else, that's fine also. I'm um, getting ready to talk about South Africa and Ghana. All right, uh, no questions, so no more questions. So, all right, let me put everybody in lecture mode, which will lock you into where you're not able to chime in the call. That way we can have a clean recording and everybody can hear us clear. Hi right, family, I'm back on the newsletter, and what I'm going to do is scroll down to the newsletter, and we have a list of topics, uh, but also what I have is a list of all the links on the newsletter, where you just click on it, and it takes you directly to the website, to all of the tour articles. So Senegal and the Gambia Roots Tour, April 3rd to the 13th, uh, is right there. Now the next uh, journey that we have, uh, South Africa Roots and Culture Tour, November 20th to the 30th. Now, that is a wonderful journey that we have set up based on what we have done last year. So right now, we have a group of 24 people, and then it's, yes, it's shock, I'm shocked, too, at the numbers I'm just saying. 24 people, uh, and um, we do have room for a few more people. My goal is to get us a nice coach bus, uh, kind of like how we do in Ghana, um, and where we just have a, a tour guide come on, and he'll just talk, 
to our group and we'll keep it like that. That's my best way to do these journeys. Uh, I try to do the best we can do whenever we have journeys that are 10, 15 people and the small bus and things like that, the small vehicle or van um, as best as possible. A guide going through everything, explaining things and just educating you on what's going on and things like that. And that's how myself give all the updates in the morning. We just go through the information and then we get off the, before we get off the bus, we go through the information that way. If anything we need to talk about, we can just use it in the time of the vehicle moving around. And nevertheless, um, even if it's a smaller vehicle, we just want to have one solid vehicle where we just go through that. That's what I am working on for our South Africa journey. And uh, what I'm going to do is click on the link, and once you click on it, it takes you directly to our website. And uh, if you're on our website directly, you just look at the main menu for South Africa Roots and Culture Tour, November 2020. All right, so let me just go for a basic uh, tour review. Uh, this is similar just like the Senegal and the Gambia tour of what's uh, included. Uh, transportation, breakfast, gourmet dinner. Uh, you're looking at three or four star hotel booking, uh, networking, entrance to all sites and activities, and uh, certified English speaking tour guide. $50 group tip. Uh, while we're in uh, South Africa, uh, we're set for five days in Johannesburg and three days in Cape Town. So it's kind of like, uh, Senegal and the Gambia to a 5-3 and I've done something before in in Brazil where it's four days Rio, four days uh, Salvador uh, so those are just you know, try to set uh, it to where we just do a balance flow I do wish we could decide one more day in Cape Town but uh, that's what we have to work with for this time around uh, so while we're there in uh, Johannesburg um, and before Johannesburg what we have set up uh, is all flights leave directly from Atlanta and go directly to Johannesburg on Delta, um, our Delta reservation. <coughs> what I did, I, I reserved more than enough flights uh, and adding the anticipated routes and things like that to where, um, to where all of us should be able to do that. But if anyone comes at last minute, can I guarantee a flight directly from Atlanta to Johannesburg? So in that case, wherever you are, say um, you're in New York, your flight will go from New York to Amsterdam and from Amsterdam on KLM uh, to uh, Johannesburg. And that means your flight will come in a few hours later, but we'll have a setup to where we'll have a driver pick you up and bring you to the hotel. Beyond that, uh, my goal is to just get deposits from anyone that's traveling with us on any tour ahead of time. That way, not only can I secure the route with a tour, but if you need a connection flight from another state or a city or, or wherever, uh, we'll be able to just submit it to, uh, to our group booking and the goal is always to get them to to, to make it along with the same budget as the, as the rest of the flights. So that's um, how we just accommodate people from wherever you are. Because uh, I never want to do a situation where I tell everyone to buy your own ticket and meet me in Atlanta. You know, and and, and I can literally work out something better for you than, and save you three, four hundred dollars, which I would rather for you to spend in Africa than to give to the airlines and make them you know, richer than they already are. Right, so while we're in uh, Johannesburg, uh, just got a uh, nice little cultural setup. When we first get there on the first tour day, we do the Lasetti Cultural Village. Now that was like a beautiful experience. Uh, you're able to visit all the uh, the different uh, South Africa or Southern Africa uh, uh, cultures, uh, Zulu, uh, and, and so on. And it's you know you you get a presentation where you go to the different ones, and also you get a nice little introduction and. There's a shop in there, and, and it's, it's, it's what people may call touristy, but you know, I don't really get caught up into that. I just try to find the best place where we can get a certain experience. And last time we went, it was incredible because I saw a bus, a Chinese pull up, a bus of, of white folks pull up, and we like the only black people there. But So you're going to see things like that in South Africa, but I tell everyone to you know, we'll just be on our best flow and focus on what we're doing and don't feed into anything and just don't, worry about anyone else. People are going to do what they need to do. Um, and that's one thing I learned about just being in South Africa. As long as we just focus on ourselves, we're good. That's the only country I've ever been to where you just see this us, but you see there's so much other people. So it's, some, you know, so it's something I have to get used to, but I realize that it's, uh, you know, it's no big deal everywhere else. I guess I've been spoiled by just being in Ghana for so long, so I had to just work my mind out of that. And uh, you know, even in Ghana, sometimes you'll see a bus of other people coming in because all these countries in Africa are getting so popular and it's just not just us, it's just so much other people coming. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, that is one of, 
one of my best experiences there. And once we leave from there, we just get lunch and then we'll go to a constitutional hill. Now that was a presentation, and I like these presentations, presentation dealing with African Holocaust or any kind of struggle or oppression because I always look at the fact that our ancestors fought their way out of this terrible situation and made something, and that should be inspiring to us. Uh, so the, these are, uh, the, the, this history is everywhere, with different countries you go to. You know, I go to Jamaica, you find out that Jesus. We have to make sure that we go there and, and connect with it and find out you know, that history. And, and also, this is an educational tour, so these are the, the part of you know, what we have as required as an educational tour. So Constitution Hill now is a, it's a, a court system. The main part that we visit at first is the actual notorious prison, and it shows how different people are separated, and it just shows you the setup of psychologically getting different races of people just to fight against each other, and then definitely just doing things to tear us apart as a people. Uh, but that is also tied into that history of apartheid, uh, which, you know, when I tell people that, you know, one of the things I've learned a lot since I've been in America is the struggle of the civil rights movement, and then you compare that struggle to what's going on in South Africa, and, you know, it's, you know, you see how things have played out to the modern day times as far as, you know, decisions of people organizing to, you know, fight against the, that struggle or oppression in a certain way. So we can all, all learn uh, something from uh, these moments. And I, I tell everyone that the best thing we could do is just, just learn to organize ourselves better and work together better and understand that all we have is us. And, and we see throughout history and disconnected time. Uh, the next day after that, we're going to do um, the Apartheid Museum, which um, I've worked it out to where you, you can have two full hours there because there's another part uh, that wasn't there when I was when I you know, first came to South Africa uh, in, in 2005. It's um, it's a Mandela presentation, which is uh, very unique, uh, and you know you have to follow the map. But it's one of those self-guided tours, and we just we like explain to everyone that. You, you have this amount of time and then we'll be at this position and I'll be in there with you but uh, it deals with a lot of information that you know if you want to read to be clear about it and once you get inside the physical museum itself uh, no cameras uh, camcorders but you can take your footage outside the main building itself uh, so those are some of the things that you know while we're there we just picked up and everything and once we finish um, we're going to go right to Soweto and have, have lunch and then we'll have more than enough time to do uh, uh, nice with the shopping and then do Mandela House and also Hector Peterson uh, Museum and Memorial and the goal is to get everybody back to the hotel about uh, 5 o'clock so um, just come back from South Africa I've aligned the flow of this how we can do the schedule more efficient and everything you know and th that was a great journey but it's like everything is in my mindset is always about what can we do better what can we do more efficient and what can we do more organized and that's all I think about every day is, you know, getting better. You know, I got a perfect uh, setup for everybody, and let me see what else is here. And then the third day, we have our early morning safari. Uh, I had it on a schedule, so I still kept it on schedule, and I'll just get feedback from the, last, from the past group and this group. And definitely after we experience this, we'll see if it is something we need to keep on itinerary. Uh, but... This is the first time we ever ever had anything as far as a safari. The original goal was to do a safari in Botswana, river and land, but it just exceed the budget and exceed the level of work that we have to do to pull it off. And while we're in uh, Johannesburg, we're staying at the uh, Portia Park Tonian All Suite Hotel, um, and it's somewhere that, I've, that when I first went there in um, actually May and November of 2005, uh, I stayed here and. It was just you know, a good experience. Uh, you just it just filled with our people there, just with the greatest level of this uh, customer service, hospitality. Uh, so you have a nice, beautiful all suite, uh, and you, it's a high rise, so you have elevators. Once we finish there in uh, Johannesburg, we're gonna fly over to Cape Town. So this is one of those journeys where you, you know you're flying over to the next city, and uh, we'll have all of our organized flight structured. I'm still trying to finalize the airline that we're going to work with. Uh, there's a few different options. Um, so uh, right now, it may say one airline, but uh, I'm just looking at different options. Uh, when we get to uh, Cape Town, we're staying at the Portia Waterfront Breakwater Lodge. So the good thing about that hotel is that it does give you just direct access to the waterfront, um, and that's for going to our um, Robin Island to 
a circle of prison where Mandela spent 18 of his 27 years. It's close to the waterfront, uh, also it's close to all the dining activities, and it's just nice to walk in, but that's another hotel that I came to. They have upgraded since, and it's owned by the, um, or owned or bought up by the Marriott, um, but, so you'll see the Marriott uh, connection to it. But uh, another wonderful place where, you know, where we can just, uh, just enjoy a nice um, three, four star lodging. So I was able to get us um, these wonderful hotels on this booking. Right now, the two days that we have on itinerary. The District 6 Museum, uh, to learn about the apartheid history, and District 6 is one of those situations where, you know, where Native people, uh, African brothers and sisters, l literally were just relocated from some of the best land and told that this is where you have to move to because we need this land to build what we need to build, and that's white European. Um, it's like the same thing that wherever you go, you just like the same oppressive struggle, like, you know, another race of people just like displace you and if you and, and tell you that you need to move or they that they military gun you down or whatever the situation is. But you know, it's a lot and a good part of this itinerary deal with that and you know, just tell everybody just kinda of just take it in there. Uh, it's you know, it's rough when you have to deal with this because you're wondering like how you know, how these things go on. But even when we go to the township tour, um, we do our best to this walk around one or two of the township or just give you the best view of moving around uh, and you see the dis displacement so it all connects certain history now I talk about the uh, ferry uh, to uh, Robin Island uh, that's um, one of those full half day uh, tour uh, so the main thing we tell everyone is this it's cold out there um, and you're you know you're driving in the water so you know, make sure that you have your jacket and make sure that you're, you're just warm and that's for the most part why we're in Cape Town because you're exposed to the waterfront and you're exposed to a colder climate. Johannesburg is nice and hot and tropical, but it's inland. Uh, the Castle of Good Hope um, I changed the lighthouse to Greenpoint uh, Lighthouse, and uh, we we'll also visit the Cape Town Diamond Works. It's a nice little place where you just see the finest jewelry being worked on and things like that. So. Put a nice little itinerary so for us to experience uh, Cape Town and um, for those who want to go out with us, we'll find a few social places to go out and definitely some wonderful dining. So family, that is it for uh, South Africa. And uh, once again, we're on the website, africaforafricans.org, and you click on South Africa Roots and Culture Tour in November 2020. And then it has the similar articles, preparation, building immune system, and so on, along with the uh, tour overview, itinerary in general terms. Let me open everything up for questions. If anyone have any questions about our South Africa journey coming up November 20 to the 30th, 2020. Um, let me put everybody back in uh, mute mode. All right, cool. Everyone, you're out of lecture mode, and you can press star six to unmute yourself. Uh, so let's give your name, uh, where you're calling from, and your question. We've gone over the South Africa, Senegal, and the Gambia tour. <clears throat> but if anyone have any questions about um, Ghana, that's also fine. Um, we're just going to do a light little go through of the, uh, our Ghana tour. No question about South Africa tour, so, right. Alright, so we are back in uh, lecture mode. Let's go to our current uh, Ghana tour. We have Ghana May 2020 and December 2020. Uh, so we have two solid group and the main thing is everyone, uh, you're required a visa to go to Ghana. So if you travel with me and you've communicated with me, that's one of the first things I send you. So it's up to you to get your visa ahead of time and follow all directions and I recommend that you do these visas about two to three months before you leave. If you're doing a single entry, you earliest you can really do is two months. Uh, so, and also the details for these things are on, also on the uh, website, right on the uh, tour link. And as far as the uh, Ghana tour, the Senegal and Gambia, I've already created a um, group WhatsApp uh, link. So for anyone that's traveled with me that I've been on those links, the goal of that is we put you on the uh, WhatsApp group link, which is a mobile app. Um, that you just download from the Play Store on your phone. Um, it's for us to just 
upload a picture of ourselves and just introduce ourselves. That way when we're traveling, we're at the airport, people know each other, but at the same time too, trying to start basic introductions before we actually get to the country, because when we get to the co different countries where you know, the itinerary is, kind of you hit the ground moving, and we do our best to kind of introduce it, small, short orientations uh, throughout the time frame. What we do is just uh, email you the information, also send it to your phone, and if you have any you know, questions or if you have any, you know, if you're not familiar with the app or if you need help, just uh, reach out to us and uh, we'll just connect with you. So that's uh, one way, and then we do have um, you know, Facebook group pages that are there where you can kind of add yourself. You know, Ghana tour May, Ghana tour December. Uh, since I uh, don't have a whole lot of Facebook friends um, um, yeah, available because, you know, they give you 5,000 and it's filled up. But uh, nevertheless, um, that's just one other way. And then, you know, we have the Instagram page uh, where you can click on or so on if you want to send a message. But let's try to be available socially online. Uh, I guess that's the age we are in uh, if anybody want to communicate. But for the most part, what I have social pages up for YouTube, Facebook, um, is mainly just for documenting and sharing uh, all the pictures and videos because people like myself are, just have this addiction where you, whenever you go, you take a ridiculous amount of videos and pictures. I still have so much videos and pictures uploaded and they always get uploaded before the next journey. Um, but it's, you know, it's these networks that let you do that. Um, I can't do all of that on my personal website. Um, plus, I don't, you know, it's not even necessary nowadays, but it does, you know, slow you down. So, uh, and they're also there to, you know, social marketing, to share with people what we do over a period of time. So when you're on Facebook, you see Ghana groups. And when I first started going to Ghana in December 2006, and every single tour I've done, all 17 were photo galleries. And that's incredible how you can have a network keep that. And then the same thing with the videos. They'll go all the way back to 2007. The, the modern day setup that I've done is from like 2011 where I tend to like literally put a majority of videos that I shoot that shows you a, a full highlight of the country. So right now it's uh, 2,000 videos of, on the YouTube and I want to say I believe 1,600 of those are footage from Ghana or conference call in reference to Ghana. Uh, so that's what we have uh, up and available. Uh, I want everyone to this kind of this see what's going on and, and, and ultimately you know, it's the world of business and letting people know what we do and then you know so you know because every time you pop up a tour going to Ghana and some of these countries and it's like as of recent because I remember I call it back in the days uh, you know that this wasn't the situation but nevertheless uh, I don't know who people might want to go with and you know that's their business but I do my best every day to step my game up to make sure that we have everything available so the intelligent mind can process information and say, hey, I, I want to go here because, you know, certain things. So that's why you um, just step up the documentation because somehow I have people that should be on our trip end up on other people's trip. And I was like, you know, you could have a certain journey. But if you look at a flyer or a postcard and you see prices and numbers, you you can't make a decision off that. You have to look into the details. Because once you click on that flyer, you don't see itineraries and so on. But that's what some of our folks do and so on. Again, I want, you know, again, encourage people to step up their game and things like that. So that's what we're doing. But, uh, the, you know, we do have a lot of information and things like that. But it's like, you know, you want, do you want to travel with people who are clear and have things in detail or just someone who puts up a flyer? So you see my tour guide, you see the bus we, we move on, you see the hotels, the Micklin Hotel, Accra and Kumasi Business Hotel, the bed and breakfast there in uh, Cape Coast and Elmina. And uh, it's not like the four-star hotels that we have in Senegal and South Africa and the Gambia. But nevertheless, Ghana is like a roots culture tour. And you know, the hotels we stayed at, I uh, stayed there all the time too, and I'm fine with it. Um, and <clears throat> and the only thing I tell folks is that you know, just look at the itinerary because where we are in that neighborhood, it gives you access to the perfect neighborhood. So when I compare everything that we have, it's usually not worth it to upgrade to maybe a four-star hotel that's in the city or outside of the district where we're going to be able to do all the things we do and connect and network and meet the real true people. So all those things have to do, you know, you know we put it in place. But 
Ghana Woods and Culture Journey is you know, our iconic journey and we have so much people there and then like my brother said earlier about staff members, you have so much people available. They're not staff members, there's people that you know that's there to assist and do certain things and you know, and people who just you know, support our energy. So if we go out we may have five additional people. So if somebody wanna go somewhere and do certain things, you have somebody looking out for you. And uh and that's what we plan to build everywhere else we go. And um, I'm going to give you just a general overview of the itinerary because it's the same schedule for both um, December and May. So we do four days in Accra, and um, that's a um, city tour uh, in Kuma Memorial Park, University of Ghana. Um, we also go up to the mountains, Botanical Garden. Uh, we have a school slash orphanage, Trinity Foundation. Um, that's one of the first schools we have. Wood carving village in, in the mountains. Uh, Incredible Repatriation Investment Conference. And, uh, and uh, so those are the first two days of touring. The, th the third day of touring, um, we go to uh, the Ancestral Memorial Wall. A uh, good friend of mine um, over there in Prom Prom Ningo. And so I have videos of that uh, long, this portrait of this, you know, from short clips of videos to long videos that shows the wall and goes into detail. So anybody that's ever traveling with us, I know it's hard to just be there with, and just like be in the hot sun and watch it all. So religiously, I record it even though we record it in previous years, and then you just you can just go back and process. So the four days um, there in um, Accra is very vibrant. Uh, we do some wonderful uh, in nightlife. Also, I'll um, take you to that uh, circle, Black Star Square Independence Arch, and you connect you to the boys. Uh, memorial and there's things that is, are just relevant to those of us from the African diaspora based on Kwame Nkrumah um, going to school in America and building this energy for you know for what eventually became this you know, iconic figure and the lead of independence throughout uh, all of Africa. You know right there and th that uh, four days is just incredible laid out so once you leave from there now we take you to the community that we're building, the 15 acres that will expand to so much more. Um, and for those who are interested in wanting to live, do business, and want to be a part of a community, that's what we have going. And we're showing you the foundation. And then as we keep on going, you know, you'll see more and more. But uh, leaving from Accra to there gives us a chance to get there early and have more than enough time to go there. Uh, the community, uh, is, you know, once we build it, it's literally two miles away from the beach. so. The goal is to eventually set things up to where we can have lunch on the beach and things like that. Uh, but once we leave from there, um, which, which, which is the halfway point, the next uh, hour and a half, two hours, we'll be in Cape Coast, Elmina, at the um, One Africa and the Carrick Hotel. So that's where we go to the African Holocaust, uh, Cape Coast uh, Holocaust Dungeons. I'm um, trying to remove the part that say or Elmina. Or Elmina is if you want an optional to go there another day. And for those who want to go there, we don't mind just getting someone to take you there and then give, give you the entrance fee and then you just go and connect. But the schedule there is, uh, is kind of tight. We only have two days of touring. So uh, one day is the African Holocaust and naming ceremony. The other day is uh, for us to go to a school, which is the Coma Academy, and also go to the Canopy Walk. And for those who don't want to do the Canopy Walk, you can go to the Holocaust Dungeons or you can, you know, it's a health resort, so you want to get uh, massages manicure, pedicure, things like that, but that's also the same situation if you were there in the, uh, the Mekon Hotel, they have their spas and things right there in the compound. So try to get you a setup to where you can also just relax and just, you know, be pampered if that's what uh, you want. Uh, and the, for those who just want to roll me to the canopy walk, I just recommend you just have some good strong shoes because you're going to hike up into the forest. And also, um, you know, the, the rocks are slippery especially when they're wet uh, when it's been raining so and then you're crossing canopies so it's a lot of canopies and if you look down it's like far down you're, you're like up in the trees uh, so I just want everybody to be prepared for what we're going to be uh, experiencing uh, there and now uh, once we leave from Kumasi we're gonna sorry once we leave from Cape Coast Elmina we're gonna head to Kumasi and since our rod has changed uh, usually we do a sin man so the last bat when we come in from Kumasi but since we adjusted the schedule, when we're going up to Kamasi, we'll stop by there and then from there, just head to our hotel, uh, Micklin Hotel, and the schedule is a little slower then. Uh, space out the two days that we have for touring.
two of the first day, we go to the University of Ghana, and then we go to the craft villages. Then we go to I Cafe uh, for uh, for lunch, and then once lunch is over, it goes to get you back to the hotel about three, four o'clock. Uh, and if you want to join our pool party, you can join it. If not, relax. Dinner is ready at seven. And the next day, the same schedule, except uh, we're going to the Shanti uh, Palace, which is called uh, Manchia Palace. And when you get there, that's one of the few places in Ghana where you cannot take any. You cannot record or take any photos, so it's you know it's inside the actual palace museum and, and a certain portion of the property. Uh, so that will be explained to you. Uh, but once we finish that, we go to the culture center, and the culture center is the same one that uh, you have there in Ghana, in Accra, the, the, the capital city, where you know it's just a little more, probably a little more organized, but it's basically represent the uh, you know the culture the arts and craft of the country um so it's one of the places where we always want to support so we you know, take you there and you just uh, get what you need to get then the, the bus will leave for ike's uh, cafe which is right there in uh, the culture center and um you know we go there for a nice tropical lunch i like to take people to take, take everyone to ike's cafe because uh first of all they accept their business here in atlanta and and then they went back to Ghana and built a restaurant like that. And it's, just, it's impressive to show you that, you know, and everything that I'm trying to experience, share with people, especially on this Ghana journey, is show you that our connection from in America to Ghana, you know, you, you, Amicus is from New York, and, you know, you, you, so you, you, you'll see the flow of what we're just building as far as the energy of those of us who are there in the, you know, there in the country trying to, trying to build a strong energy of encouraging those from the diaspora to be a part of the future. Uh, so this is a Ghanaian family once again uh, uh, from uh, Ike's uh, Cafe and, and they're there now. The owners tend to spend more time there which is good because you know, we did go up to their cafe um, a few weeks ago in uh, Norcross which is uh, in uh, Gwinnett County. Uh, so um, this, uh, you know, try to just show us, uh, you know, show everyone a certain connections and certain networks and these are not the same people that we deal with so they know us well and it gives us a chance to do some good networking. Once you experience uh, those two days, I, you're going to love it. Um, uh, enjoy the ordering of different foods and tropical drinks. And enjoy the, the, the wonderful lodging that we have for you at the Micklin Hotel, which is a nice three-star hotel. Uh, some people will get balcony views. Some people won't. Uh, but it's in a good location where we have wonderful things going on. Uh, we're in a beautiful nightlife. And you know, it's a nice, secure location where... You know, security is there and everything, and you're there in the, the heart of Kumasi. Uh, so, family, uh, that is it. So, the links are there for the hotels and lots of videos to share with you. Uh, you, you may see some videos show you some parts of uh, the hotel and things like that. So, family, that is all I have as far as the overview of all of the uh, journeys that we have set up. Uh, so, the main thing is to make sure that uh, you go to our website, africafoodafricans.org, and Click on the relative tour information and uh, jot down any questions you have and you can just call or email or communicate and we'll just uh, go through it. So what I want to do is just open up the conference call before we close for a final question. So let me just get everybody off uh, lecture mode. Good um, name, where are you calling from a question? I'm Ms. Cooper again, Florida. All right, uh, go ahead, uh, Cooper. You mentioned uh, about the Micklin being a three-star. I was wondering, do they have mosquito nets? Uh, no, they don't. If you want mosquito nets, the best thing I would recommend is for you to bring it with you. That way you guarantee mosquitoes nets. So is it, what do you do? I mean, do you hang it on a bed, or how do you use it? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I've never used a mosquito net. I, I, I wouldn't even know where to start. Uh, so but there's, there's no problems with mosquitoes in that area, in the Micklin? Um, there's, I mean, there's mosquitoes everywhere. I, I don't leave, I, I lock myself in my house because I don't want to get attacked by the mosquitoes outside in my front house here. In, but I mean, you in spray Georgia. yourself, you spray yourself at, before you, at, you know, before you go out with all or mean, something. You can do that or do the same thing that you do in America. I mean, I mean, literally, there's no more mosquitoes in America than it is in Ghana. So, it, it throws me off when people ask me questions like that, but I, I honestly don't know. So you can spray yourself. We do put that on there. You can eat uh, food that's not going to be so much trying to attack you uh, from mosquitoes. And you can also um, wear fragrance-free things. 
try to, and you can also look up different procedures, but it's not that bad to where you have to worry about it, but we just try to just let people know you can do certain things, but uh, it's not a big problem. Okay. Thank you. All right. I went through all of the uh, tour details for the four tours we have. If you don't have any questions, we're going to close in a few minutes, uh, and it's all good. You can always communicate with me. I'm available seven days a week. Uh, and the only time I'm not available is when we're traveling on tours. But you can also communicate with me via WhatsApp or email, and I'll do my best to communicate back with you within 24 to 48 hours while we're on tour. And um, the tour dates are listed and available that way. Individuals that are looking to communicate with me can know that you know we're on tour. But whenever I'm not on tour, I'm here at my office doing business. Bamani, this is Shelly um, going on the December Ghana tour. And uh, thank you for indulging. Uh, I hate to ask what may sound like a stupid question, but I really believe the only stupid question is the one you didn't ask. So <laughs> here I go. I was also going to ask that question about the mosquitoes too, uh, Cooper. Um, but not a stupid question, but I know that I'm not, um, I feel like very, not, not, I don't want to say naive, but I feel like some of my questions are going to reveal um, the, my level of ignorance about my mother home. You know what I'm saying? If that, I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, yeah. no, I'm not saying that it's, it's being most dumb. I'm just saying. Most people are first-time travelers and first time, you know, first time travelers in general and things that I said. Yes. I mean, you're not going to know what's on the other side of the world and things that unless you study of things that. So it's, it's, it's absolutely fine. I, you know, I'll do my best to just Thank you. communicate and let you know what we can, you yeah. know. So go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're just, I appreciate your indulgence. Um, so it's, it sounds like when you were talking about the option for either the canopy walk or um, staying behind and, you know, doing some pampering or, or meditative types of things, um, but it also sounded like there was, you know, beach activities. So should we come prepared for um, activities on the beach, actually on the beach? Like, you know, should we come prepared with swimsuits and whatever we would do for swimming, come prepared with that? Is that are, are those going to be opportunities for that kind of um, activity? And then the other second part of my question is um, you talked a couple of times about going out with the group. Um, and it sounds like out with the group is maybe you could have a drink or, you know, but it's more very casual as opposed to should we come with, <clears throat> casual, you know, something to go out in the evening, like you would go to a Starbucks or coffee house around the corner? Or should you come like you're going to a, you know, downtown star club? Does that, so those are my first-time traveler questions. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Um, one thing I do have on all of our tour links is a, is a preparation list. And a preparation list, those are some of the things we just make sure we include a preparation list. So, yes, uh, we're going to be... Um, not necessarily a beach swimming, but uh, we'll have a nice pool where we have our pool party uh, and things like that, and socialization. So you know, definitely tell people to bring swimwear. Some places we go at nighttime, it's a nightclub. Some places a social gathering, uh, and some places just straight networking. So, but yet there is alcohol involved and music involved and, and things like that. So. If you want to dress up and things like that, um, definitely welcome that. But uh, always make sure that uh, br I bring a little bit of everything. Because in the daytime, you want to be a little more comfortable. In the nighttime, you may want to look a little more classier. And then we all, a lot of times we go out to fancy places. And it's, so, and it's just up to the individual. Um, not, okay. you know, not a fashion statement, but um, you, know, it's, uh, you, know, you, you want to create a nice little social environment. People, you know, you dress up and you socialize with your brothers and sisters, have a good meal and have a good time, take some pictures and kind of just enjoy the moment in whatever African country together. Okay. And so with that in mind, do you recommend in the uh, material online a luggage size? Like are there limitations? You know, when we travel <clears throat> from one region to the next region, are, do we need to be aware of 
the size of luggage? Are we? Is that on a coach, or how does that happen? I have no issue with luggages. We make it work. I have a big bus, and we fit it in there. Uh, but uh, okay. the ideal um, luggage uh, check-in bags, you know, you get your nice 25, 24 to 26-inch roll-on spinner bag, um, and that's a nice size that you can manage. And by the time you fill it up, it's going to be 50 pounds. Uh, and then it's something that you can handle also. And then for your carry-on bags, um, get your you know, get you a smaller version, um, a 20-inch version of that, um, where you can just pack your, you know, your basic things and just carry it on the plane, and it will fit in the overhead bin. And then if you have like yeah. a, the other one, it could be like a backpack, where backpack is simple. If you can't find any overhead space, then you can fit it under the seat in front of you. Uh, so okay. Those things, you know, I recommend, and I try to take pictures of stuff that we have, so that people see how we move, and then you now those things are easy to fit on the cart when you move them around the airport. Okay, okay. Oh my gosh, my heart's racing. I'm so I get excited. That is perfect. That is perfect. So, so everything seems clear to you. So you're ready to lock in. Um, Re- remuted, but yes, I um I'm coming out from Portland. I'm ready to lock in and then um. Either be when I get off the phone or first thing in the morning. Yeah. And that'll, I'll, what I'll do is my deposit and then go from there. I'm also the one who is going to uh, try to do a GoFundMe because I really don't have the resources at all to make this journey. But it's more than a, you know, I, I everything that you say and everything that um, other travelers who have gone with you say resonate with me so much um it's 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 a pull it's almost like a pull of an umbilical cord you know um it's the best way i can describe it and i just have to do it but Monty, look at you you're just you are the marcus garvey i know it has to be overwhelming at times move forward and think i appreciate it uh trying not to get caught up into certain things i mean um but and just focus on the work in, in itself because I have so many other people who call themselves this and this. I'm the second coming of Garvey and this. And you ask them what you're doing to respect to earn that title or call himself Garvey Town and build no town. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I'll get back to what you were talking about. It's one of those things that's, that's funny because based on what I saw in Ghana before I even got there about uh, different groups of people been in black communities and so on. And then people like myself, the only thing that I've done was literally take busloads of people to these communities that doesn't exist because no, they never built it. And up until, you know, and there's been a few of them, Theonka, Garvey Town, those are the two. Uh, so what we have done is just tough it out and realize that, you know, that, you know, we just have to organize amongst ourselves and do what we need to do for ourselves. So was able to acquire fresh land. So land you're going to was just acquired literally less than, it's not even finally acquired. It's just still, it's still a deposit on it. When you get there, the goal is to get our land deed, which, you know, so we're working on paying for the land and getting things in place to where we'll be able to build on it and have everything in place. So we're building an organic community from the ground up. I mean, from the, when the, ground, up, the ground up goes from the videos I showed in December when we literally walked there and the land is not clear and things like that, and then from there to show you our progress. And um, none of us are professional community developers, but it's, we shouldn't have to be that way. Um, we, you know, we have enough people, talents and skills in the, in the, in, on the African continent and the diaspora for us to make this together. We just have to be organized. And what I learned from those two groups of people I just ma- mentioned, Fianca and Garvey Town, is that they just explained to me what it is to be the most unprofessional, unorganized, mismanaged operation with our folks. And it doesn't have to be that way. Um, and <laughs> right. you know, people like myself have, yeah, people say, well, you have all this technology. Yeah, I have a technology advantage in the business administration, but at the same time, too, I didn't know nothing about those things until recently when I put my time into learning them. And before that, the only thing I knew how to do was work on aircraft systems. And, you know, but right. it's like, you know, it's like, we, when it comes, my point is like when it comes to delivering for our brothers and sisters, we got to get away from excuses. And I don't have no mercy for anybody. It's like I have to get up every day and every day and do it and work for the last set of years. And because I don't want to lose the momentum of 
the people that are interested in what we're doing. Because once you mess up with our people, you may never get the energy back. They may not trust you again. And I don't exactly. blame our people because so much of us have messed us, messed the rest of us over over a period of time in so many different business. And you know, you always want to put out there that not all of us are like that. And then you know, and you, know, and you want to represent the people that are not like that. Uh, so we're gonna organize this thing. The work I've, you know, I have a great foundation of people on it. And the crazy thing about it, I've been be able to accomplish all this stuff while being here at my office and having people run around the country, moving around, doing things. And, and you know, so I'm asking people, I was like, I don't even live in the country and I can get more than you done in the country. That's, just, that's a shame. Uh, and I'm talking about the, the two organized operations. So our goal is to really to show people what we can do. And yes, people have paid into it. But at the same time, too, if anyone that's not familiar with the ins and outs and everything that we've been doing for the last few months, I'd rather for them not to send any money because I want them to look to everything and be clear and then for those who come with me and they see it, then they want to join in, then that's fine. But you want to make sure that people are clear about everything and you don't do anything to lead people on or confuse people or make people think that what you're doing is something else. Uh, so uh, when anyone that's interested in the, the community that we're building, uh, once you go to our website, um, it's right there on top of the main menu. It'll say Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community and it'll have all of the, the stuff, everything you see is the progress of what we have made. And then every time we go to Ghana, you see the next set of progress. The next set of things you'll see is land being clear, our land deed. And um, you'll see a community map of where all the homes and everything will be and things like that. And all those things are things we're just working on to get it done because at the end of the day, you know, we're just like frustrated with people who have just, you know, not delivered. You know, I shouldn't have to do this business and then do this other business, but... At the end of the day, that's what it comes to. So I'm um, getting my family involved in us just enterprise in Africa tourism investments. Well, here's a quick question on that as well. How do you see that investment opportunity or that opportunity to become part of that community? How do you see that happening? Uh, Are people buying lots and building on them or buying already built property or... Yeah, I can ask you because the people have paid paid into it. That's how we're able to get the money to pay for the land. And but this is not just regular people. These are people that I've built some relationship with, and they've been working on like the previous project with us. And when it didn't work, I just told them what we do because I'm tired of the disappointment. I'll reroute you to the next project and transfer you over, and make it all work, which I've done. Um, and so, what I was explaining to you is what we're going to get done. And what you see on the site when you click on it and look at it is, you know, it's more than just a 99-year lease. Uh, when it, it will give you a foundation of, of clarity of what we have went to to acquire the land and went to. And then the videos itself shows us meeting the chief, going to the land, the lawyer explaining certain things, the consultant explaining the connection and things like that. And it's being transparent with our folks because some of these other people, they, there's no documentation of how they got the land, what they did, how they started. They just say they're building a town and everything. And then, unfortunately, when you connect with them, all of the dirty lies and the secrets unfold. And then they are, then now we, we have certain issues. So, you know, I'm, you know, so, I mean, you know, so I mean, I'm, t- I've, I've, I'm taking this one group to court right now, and I'm not in the country, but I got representation and things like that. I'm one of them people that, you know, this goes, I'm not in the country. I'm going to send people after you. So, you know, we're trying to set things up to let our people know that, you know, we're going to get this done because there's no community there that represents us on the DAS, but not one. Uh, but I can tell you about several phonies who are trying to build something and don't know, you know, and they're just running around chasing their tail. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's just about organizing. And I can't make any excuses for people who want to take shortcuts and not do certain things. So I'm telling everyone to give us a chance um, to do this. And we're only, I've only have six months, but I've accomplished more in six months than a lot of these people have accomplished in a decade. And that's just by simply just getting up every day and doing the work. The phones ring, emails get sent in, text messages, things, a pro- list of projects that needs to be get done, and you just work on it. You know, you sometimes you have to close out the outside world and do the job that people are paying you for and do the job that people are investing in you in. So that's the difference between what we're doing and what they have done. And we've gotten a lot of support based on the way we have handled the situation. So once we build it up a little bit, the 15 acres, that, and the chief explained, once we build it, they'll give us more land. Uh, so then 
everyone else come in would see the fact that we did something and they just not they it, it, we don't just don't have like 300 or 400 acres of land that's sitting there for 10, 15, 20 years with one or two raggedy houses built on it. <laughs> and yeah, you know, I mean, I have no mercy for the people I talk about, you know, because it's, it's like they throw me under the bus and and just embarrass me in front of all the people I brought to them. Yeah, you know. So wow. um, I've taken the venture wow. on to where we're doing tourism investment, and we just have. A certain people rolling with us or certain people that we deal with and if they don't show a level of organization professionalism I'm getting rid of them and they can't do anything with us anymore and it's like you guys need to do the job you're getting paid for and do do whatever we agree on if I say I'm gonna bring a bunch of people to your community or your your business or whatever you need to do what we agree on and get it done and no reasons or excuses other than that we just can't deal with you no more and there's no more there's no second chances or anything like that and it's like that's where I'm at nowadays. It's like I've just, I've, you know, you've given the benefit of the doubt to where the benefit of the doubt is 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 dead. You know, yeah. now it's time for people to show what they're about, and that's it. So it's a new era, and and just happy to just lead the charge on this and looking to recruit people that are part of the future, uh, to, for us to do tourism and investments together. Okay. Uh, probably enough said, and I've kept everybody too long. So, family, uh, let me not hold everybody else. So appreciate energy. I'll do my best to edit this conference call and have it up and remove anything that's unnecessary so it's not that long. So, everyone, appreciate your energy. Anyone who still have any questions or want to reach out to me, you can send me an email, a text, or just uh, call me, and we'll talk. Awesome. Thank Every you. you pr- appreciate good night, everyone. Everyone, good night. You take care, and have a wonderful rest of your day.